This is FFPU, your primary source for Austrian film and TV critique, where two minds come together to take apart the work of people who actually matter. Welcome back to a new episode of FFPU. It is the 3rd of February 2017. And we are recording the 25th episode of FFPÖ and I have the first guy who's coming back basically. Um, yeah, you're the, you're the first guy who's doing, doing it twice except for my regular co-host who has disappeared from the earth at this point. Um, that, that sounds ominous. I hope it doesn't <laughs> happen to me. Hi, Luke. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you for being back, man. Well, no, thank you for asking me back. Um, oh, I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad sign, but... Oh, it's a very good sign. Good. I, I'm, come on, don't be, don't be your, 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 your um, uh, British, uh, like, coquettish. Oh, no, I'm, I don't know if I'm beautiful or smart or funny. I don't know. I it's, don't know if he wants me back. <laughs> it's, it's the British self-deprecation. I've, yeah. I've, I've only lived in Austria for about six months, so I've not yeah. quite got rid of it yet. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, but thank you anyway for having me back. It's, <laughs> it's nice to be here. Yeah, it's, it's great for having you. And we watched... What did we watch? We watched Silentium, yes. which is a, a, another Josef Harder film. Exactly. In the same series as the one we watched last time, yeah. Bone Man. So yes. um, well, I was the, very keen to see that. Oh yeah, you were really stoked. You pushed me to... like. Like you were, you were like, uh, what are we watching? Maybe we can watch this. Like <laughs> doing it as the first example. Like this would be great because it would close up the series for me. I, gen for you. I gently suggested what yeah. we might watch, and you very kindly obliged. Oh no, it was on my list, on my short list, anyways. And uh, I think we started now four or five different movie and TV shows. And we didn't close up any of those yet, so <laughs> it's good to have one in the bank and not start another thing. Like we have to, like in the last episode, and well, second to last episode, we did um, uh, Schulmädchen Report, the German uh, educational porn from the 1970s with, with um, um, Jack Holmes. Hi Jack, by the way, if you're listening in. Hello uh, Jack. Yeah, you know each other. Uh, yes. Two. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So I have, I think, thirteen movies. They made thirteen of those. Was it always Schoolgirls? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Are you going to sit through all thirteen with various guests? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Maybe it's just me and Jack's thing up to the, from now on. <laughs> like he he hopes that the next time it's not going to be one of those movies, and then it's going to be it again. <laughs> like I'm promising no no dude it's gonna be different this time I have a really brilliant art piece it's amazing and then it's that one again well I'm sure it's a brilliant episode if Jack's on it so. oh yeah no it was great yeah listen in if you haven't yet but most of the people don't listen uh, to mm, uh, like the, most people li listen to it in, in like in sequence right yeah so they may not have listened to Jack's episode yet Oh, no, they... They, they, they will they, have listened to they, Jack's yes, episode, yeah. yeah. Well, they, they should probably listen to it again, because I'm sure it was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we watched Silencium, a 2005 movie made in Austria, and it mostly, except for one diversion, takes place in Salzburg. And um, Brenner, in this case, is not a cop, not a, not a uh, EMT. He's not... Uh, he's a private eye. He's a private detective. Yeah. And he, this, in this story, he's on the trail of, um, well, there's, there seem to be lots of potential crimes going on. Yes, yes. There it's, is, it's a crime spree. It's a crime galore. spree. Um, there's smuggling of some sort. Yes. There's uh, the cover-up of abuse in the yes. Catholic Church. Yes. Um, ha, there's topical. people smuggling. Well, there's, when um, it is not. When, it, when, when isn't... Uh, <laughs> child abuse by the Catholic Church well, topical. That's an interesting point. This, this film's made in... 2004, yeah. which is, a, as I think, it was a little bit before... Well, we already was, had scandals. We already like, had scandals, but... Um, not the uh, really big ones, the, yeah, the Grammys. And then there, there's, more recently, there have been more films on the on the same subject, Spotlight, for example, right, and there's right. a great uh, Alex Gibney documentary called um, 
Mia Culpa in uh, oh, which is some not, type of not, silence, not silence, not silence in the House of God, yeah. um, which is a, a documentary about um, child abuse in the yeah. Catholic Church. Um, so, uh, but this is that those are I think, some Mia later. Mia Culpa sometimes is used in, in, in well, it nearly died out now in Austrian language uh, as as my bad. <laughs> Mia Culpa, my bad. I did it. Sorry, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah. So this this film um, it appears sometime before all those. Yes. Um, the really uh, big stuff. The really big stuff. Uh, yeah. Comes out. Um, uh, but as I say, that's one of the one of the uh, themes. Yes. In this film. So I guess we're already going to move on to our first topic in this case, and that's going to be plots. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. As we said, there are like what five, five, six different strings. That's right. Yeah. That are all kind of neatly interweaved and have touching point, touching points between them, which makes it for a very interesting view, I guess. It does, and um, there's also uh, the, the, the the film starts with a classic. Um, murder mystery really oh yeah yeah um, totally like it could be from from miss marple or absolutely. or uh um um no what's his name colombo it could be like because it's not a who done it but a um how he get it or, that's right yeah. yeah yeah um and the cover up of this murder as a as a suicide yes um is the first thing that that uh, brenner has to and it interrupts it interrupts the title sequence <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> like we have the title sequence, then we have the murder, and then the title sequence completes, which was, I think, a very interesting way to do to do to do an intro to a movie. I like that. But yeah, so we have we have Brenner in, as as a private eye in Salzburg. For those people who don't know Salzburg, which I don't know, it's the second most famous city, I think, or even more famous than Vienna. It could well be regards. more famous than Vienna. Um, Just famous from the music. Music. Yeah. Mozart that, Kugel. Yeah. Mozart. Yeah, exactly. Festspiel. Yeah, the Café Tomaselli, one of the oldest existing European coffee houses. It's like 360 years old or something like that, which also, also is coincidentally... Uh, they 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 are have to share the same family name as the, as my father's family. Ah, so, so does that mean you get free coffee then? Uh, my dad did. Brilliant. <laughs> I haven't died it yet. I, sh I don't ha I don't have the family name. I have my mom's name. Well, hopefully she's also related to someone that produces something delicious yes, that you could yes yes you could yes, it's Austria, of course. Austria. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm related to a presentation machine making manufacturer. Really? Yeah. He's like the num. The company is like the number one in their field. Like if you do like a huge uh, digital wall up a, up a building or something like that, that those are the guys. That's that, whenever I'm in the market for a presentation machine, yes. I know where to come. <laughs> I don't know what the English term is for it. Or Nor do it, I. Yeah, Nor do I. I have no idea what those because they are not real projectors. There are no DLPs or something like that. There, no, there's something else. It's it's something he holds like a bunch of patents. He's like the Austrian Steve Jobs, basically. For presentation machines. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very wow, very, very okay. We're going on a tangent. We're again. slightly on a yes. tangent here. Yeah. Yes. Back to Salzburg. Anyway, for, yeah. for anyone that doesn't know Salzburg, uh, you very quickly get the impression from the film that Salzburg is this incredibly genteel, uh, picturesque, touristy, which high, high cultured place. Which it is in some regards. Which it is in some regards. And, um, but very quickly, in fact, from the first few seconds of the film, yeah. uh, you can see that what we're going to investigate in the film is the dark underbelly and repressed nature of, of that yeah, place totally because if you're in the mountains and you have Catholicism you're gonna end up with some weird stuff right that's that's just that's just a very easy formula <laughs> and it delivers um, we do see some weird stuff yes like 
I don't know. That, that might be something for the secret category. But move. Let's let's steam ahead on the on the plot department. So he's a private eye. There he runs into a woman that is stealing underwear. Um, but she's so famous apparently that they just let her go without even checking. That's right. And after that, he's well. This takes him into the whole world of. Salzburg, really, mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, intersection between the Catholic Church, the Festspiele, the Festspiele, which is like the hugest affair when it comes to making money through music in Salzburg. Think you two in the 1990s, early 1990s, filling the the O2 Stadium. Was it back then the O2 Stadium? I have no idea. The O2 Arena? Arena, I mean, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, the well, huge British the... thing. Okay, maybe, yeah. yeah, Wembley probably. Then. Yeah, okay, something yeah. like that. Yeah, filling up yeah. that, but so brief, all brief... with classic, classic music lovers. Basically. Sorry, I, I thought you were briefly yeah. referring to the underground line, the U2 there. Oh, no, I was, no. I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> I guess bon that's why bon Bono doesn't show up in Vienna ever. Because no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Because, no. because he doesn't well, actually, like... he drives the U2. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> in, uh, that would be hilarious. It would be hilarious, wouldn't yeah. it? Mind That's edge. a very Vienna internal joke, you know. <laughs> My international audience is not going to get that one. <laughs> They're not going to apologize to your international audience. Yeah. Anyway, back to Salzburg. Yeah. And uh, so this, this, this leads him into the whole world of, uh, of Salzburg High and Low Society, really. Right. Um, this very sophisticated, um, cultured yeah. surface. Yeah, and then underneath, um, posh, the, really. Yeah, they posh. are posh. They are like they are they're posh. throwing money around like it's nobody's business. Yeah, um, because it transpires that the woman who he uh, failed to arrest for shoplifting Lifting, is very yeah. incredibly well connected. In fact, her father is the director of the uh, Festspiel. Yeah, and her husband, it later transpires, was the um, was the man who was murdered. Yeah, and also who um, wanted justice for his time in the uh, priest, I don't know, what, 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 what would it be called, like a boy's children's... Yeah, the children's home run by the yeah. Catholic Church. Yeah, exactly, um, and, and he, he was he, alleged... He accuses the, yeah. the, the priest of... Um, well, he's, using he's, not, he's not a priest anymore at that point. He's uh, the highest official in Salzburg yes. when it comes to the Catholic, Catholic Church. So, yeah, he, he is a very powerful man in a very Catholic-centric community. To, 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 okay, so to describe, yeah, Austria in general is very Catholic, but Salzburg is definitely one of the, I don't know, centers, I guess, of Catholicism and uh, uh, mysticism in the Catholics, uh, like the amount of, of, of shit that they have in the, in the churches there, when it comes to like um, um, religious items and stuff like that, they, 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 they have a lot of that stuff. So it's, it's definitely a center of that too. And um, yeah, he, he then gets how does he get the, the, the woman's attention? First, he's still staying with his buddy, right? That's right. He's um, sharing a flat with his yeah. his friend, yeah. who is a former neo-Nazi. Uh, neo -Nazi, and has now he looks the part. He looks like right out of a gang from 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 Breaking Bad. That's or, right. He's heavily yeah. tattooed. And um, heavy set. Heavy set. Wears a vest. Yeah. And um, has seems a to... bald head. Yeah, shaven head. Yeah. And seems to spend his time um, smoking and growing and growing marijuana yep. whilst watching uh, truck racing on TV. <laughs> um, which is, in, in which his, is in his defense, which is as white trash as it gets in Austria. Really, uh, in, in in his defence, he he says he's now become a, he's no longer a neo-Nazi and has, yes. has swung to the left. Yes, and now believes in equality for all. No, it, what he actually referenced to was equal pay for everybody. So, more of a communist thing than anything else. Yes. He swung r all the way to the left. <laughs> I guess. He's like a pendulum. 
He's, yeah. he's like a he's like a pendulum. So yeah, he, he, also, he he actually becomes a pendulum later. Yeah. So so uh, <laughs> our, our hero Prenner is uh, sharing a flat with this yeah. pendulum <laughs> of a man. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's from there that he he investigates these various crimes and yes, strands of uh, exactly. corruption and uh, silence yeah. in the Salzburg world. Exactly. Um. And he yeah. gets hired by uh, the widow. That's right. He of the victim. He he gets hired by the widow the, the widow of the victim. Yeah. To investigate her son, uh, her, her sons. Her sons. <laughs> oh, that would have been another layer that would have made it way creepier. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, judging by my experience of some Austrian films, um, not at all surprising. <laughs> had that transpired. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cliche, and you know it. <laughs> But it's also true. Um, <laughs> uh, just look at our royal family. Um, well, don't, because they look ugly. <laughs> All those draft defects. Jesus, they accumulate. Um, so, um, oh shit. Um, yeah, again, it has like five or six strings. So he starts to investigate in the in the in the monastery, right? It's a monastery, basically, or boys home school. Yes. Thingy. Yes. It's like so, a hybrid of, of three different things, basically. Yeah. So it's a seminary. Yeah. Where they're, I think, training priests. It's a, a boys' school where they're looking after boys. Yeah. Um, and there is also a an influx of uh, women who are brought in by bus to right. be nuns, um, or and, just helping. Or hands. also helping hands in the in the seminary. So yeah. There's that location, if you like, which he in, investigates, um, and. With the, like with the worst kind of cover story ever, like he's a homeless dude that 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 just looks for work. That's right. He 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 infiltrates the seminary by turning up and pretending to be homeless. Yeah, and uh, meets um, Fitz. Fitz. Yeah, and also uh, the sports prefect. The sport. The sports prefect. Now that's a title, right? He's just the sports guy. He's not even. That's. I think a sports prefect would probably be below uh, a trained professional sports teacher, like an ed teacher, ed, physical. Oh, um, PE teacher. PE so teacher, yeah. Or sports teacher. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Like an. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's below that, but the title sounds fancier. <laughs> Very Austrian too. Like we back in the days, we had like. Um, the the uh, I think it was in the 60s or in the 70s we got rid of like 200 titles um, that were officially given by the Austrian government. It was uh, like a, a leftover from the empire, from the Kaiser, and uh, those titles mostly meant nothing in means of pay, but it was like a, a, a rung between normal employees and manager basically, and it was called aspirant which means to aspire, like to breathe in the next position already. So when the other guy leaves, you get the job. Basically. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, so, I'm, so I'm, it's one of those corporate promotions that is a, is a, is a, is a new title and yeah. not a pay rise, probably. Yes. Well, without a pay rise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just for show or prestige or whatever. And they got rid of those. But that's still a remnant, basically. Some t titles like that. Well, Austrians do like titles. Oh, we love titles. If you've ever ordered online from Billa, for example, yeah. their drop-down box of your suggested yeah. titles is extraordinary. Yeah. It must be at least 30, yeah. if not 100 yeah. different options, I actually, in addition to Mr. and Mrs. I, I have to show you my Billa cards later on. You're going you're gonna to really enjoy that one in that case. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, thank you. I hope um, Billa card isn't a euphemism. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does give you some rebates. <laughs> um, all right, ten percent off of cock. <clears throat> um, all right. Um, what 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 else happens? Um, yeah, he's in the seminary. He's tasked with uh, with fixing a cross. Yes, one of the key moments. Yeah, is he is given a 
basically he becomes a handyman, doesn't he? Yeah. Sort of, he, yeah. he gets for a five, job for six euros for an five, hour. For six, for five, he offers to to uh, work, work for five euros an hour, and the uh, priest, the gives, priest him. gives him six euros an yeah. hour. Generous, which is as hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, his first task is to symbolically fix a rotting cross. Yeah. Like we we are talking passion of the Christ life. Yes. So he uh, life size. Yeah. Cosplay cross. <laughs> Which you see him carry yeah. across his shoulder yeah. up the stairs or down the stairs. I down the stairs. Watch, down the stairs. And then he slips. And uh, it all ends in tears in a big heap of cross and man at the bottom yeah. of the stairs. <laughs> Actually, that was, I thought, one of the funniest scenes in the film <laughs> yeah. was where um, you see them removing the statue of Jesus from the crucifix. Yeah. But I just sort of unscrewing his his hand yeah. <laughs> with an electric drill. Um, yeah, the, like the Romans would have been so much more efficient if they had uh, instead of nails, they had like some good old Bosch power drills and and and, and some nice sets of uh, screws. Like they would have been, like that would have been way less of a drain to the for, to the Roman Empire. <laughs> would have been way more efficient. Are you, are you suggesting that the Roman Empire collapsed because the soldiers were too busy yeah. spending their time hammering in nails rather yeah, it, than... It's not an efficient time time, time thing. Well, it's like... an interesting view of history, <laughs> but <laughs> you're the history I, scholar. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the alternative facts. <laughs> um, topical humor. Topical. Um, yes. So, um, he he knocks himself out with the cross and then wakes up in a Jesus-like sequence where thorns are removed from his head um, to Bertie, his old mate that we already know from the last movie that we did where he was the boss of, of Brenner. He was the collector's collector. Yeah. Yeah. Now, back then, he was still a... Still an ambulance driver. Yeah, exactly. An EMT. And um, now we are slipping in body cop, body cop movie territory, I think. That's right. Yeah. And the other thing that we should probably introduce is the uh, Fußball table. Oh, yes. So upstairs in the seminary yeah. um, is a... Table football table, yeah, um, which uh, Brenner, a key role. It plays a key role, and Brenner plays table football with yeah um, Fitz. Fitz. One of the visions he has while he's in his concussed state from having the cross fall on his head. Second concussion, different is is, is not the one I'm referring to. So we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> but look forward to that later yes. in the podcast. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and look for uh, look for it in the movie because that sequence was amazing. That but, sequence was great. Yeah, but yeah, he, so I he just thought just... I'd tee it up now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he wakes up with him. Uh, with Bertie and Bertie basically reluctantly starts to help him and the more and more the intrigue grows and the, 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 the conspiracy Bertie gets more and more involved and dragged into the whole thing because by this stage um, Bertie and Brenner are being pursued by the two thugs yes employed by the baddie whom we don't know yeah. who the baddie is yet yes um, so they're uh, in this game of chase with these two guys that are trying to... Yeah, but to, it's a very Austrian chase. It's a very Austrian chase. Because it, it, it's long drags of nothing and then 20 seconds of excitement followed by long drags of nothing, which are still intriguing, but <laughs> but uh, they, 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 they are definitely diverting from the American Hollywood formula. Yes. With that. Yes. And, um, yeah, so Berti and him investigate... Um, at at some point, uh, the, the 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 gangsters are uh, tasked with delivering um, uh, a plane ticket to because oh right he has a, well, he, has a he has a talk with 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 the father of uh, the his employer. That's right. He yeah. uh, he goes to the Festspiel House and meets the director, who is the right. father of his employer, who is the woman that he caught shoplifting. Right. And uh, 
the father is a unpleasant character, I think it's fair to say. Yes, he's the closest we get to our Bond villain in the whole movie. <laughs> like a really shitty, shitty, shitty Bond villain, basically. And he, he is... Um, he doesn't hold back and tells uh, Brenner right to his, to his face that he's lucky uh, or very, very happy that the husband of his daughter died because he didn't like him or I don't know, I didn't really I, get what his... I thought he suggested oh, that he wasn't a real church, man in some oh, way. And, or, and the church thing I think yeah, was also... That's right, he didn't, yeah. didn't like what he accused the... Or like the fact that he'd made these accusations against, right. against yeah. the church. Yeah. So, yeah, after that, um, the boss wants to convince Brenner, basically, through his thugs, to stop with the investigation. And they give him a plane ticket from Salzburg to Vienna, which is ridiculous, but... I think it's probably worth mentioning how they deliver the plane ticket to him. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's delivered um, in the corpse of the flatmate of Brenner, yeah, the former neo-Nazi yeah, turned communist. Yeah, because he smelled that those two guys were fishy that were delivering it and started to attack them with a switchblade. Yeah. And that didn't, that ended very, ended badly for the bad guys, but very badly for him because as we teased, he actually turns up to be a, real pendulum he does yeah he ends up hanging upside down with holding a plane ticket in one hand with yeah. a telephone in his mouth yeah exactly and very sliced up too yes. like tortured as well yes yeah um, an unpleasant end like that's the closest we get to like an uh, uh um like a law and order <laughs> episode probably <laughs> with that murder scene like the only thing that was missing was a Oh, what is it? Dun dun. I don't know. I can't do the sound. Before we move yeah. on, we should probably mention the last theme or the last crime that's investigated, and that's the smuggling that right. appears to be going on. Right. So when uh, Brenner is first collected in the ambulance by Bertie, yeah. um, Bertie is also in the middle of a scam, some, a scam of some sort. Yeah. We see him collecting... A scheme. scheme. A we'll scheme scam. Yeah. We see him collecting a bag full of stuff from a hotel where a, a maid a maid delivers the stuff taken from a uh, opera singer's room yeah exactly and uh, Bren, uh Bertie then delivers this um to the director to the director and for this he's paid 100 euros and um per bag per bag and Brenner is concerned as to why so much should be spent on basically a bag of rubbish Totally. And it, it totally fooled me too. Because I was immediately thinking about a drug smuggling scheme or, or something nefarious, but it turned out to be the least troubling part of the whole thing, basically. Yes. Which it's still disturbing to a certain degree, just from an invasion of privacy standpoint. We should probably say what it is, shouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Put just people out of their misery. The, the reason why he's collecting rubbish is in order to find out what the artist's particular favourite things grooming are, favourite grooming product. products, so that yeah. the, the director can... It's a pre-Instagram move. Because it is in 2005, and yeah, we don't have smartphones yet, not real ones at least. Those Nokia, Windows, mobile phones don't count in my book. And there wasn't Facebook... And stuff like, well, there was Facebook, but not so, really. So in the absence yeah. of Facebook, their privacy is invaded by stealing bags of rubbish, which reveal what their favourite products and things are. And then the director of the f festival can give them presents with their favourite things in. And yeah, they say, oh, it's, that's amazing. It's a, it's a schmooze for schmoozing. It's the director of the festival mm -hmm. catering to the artist's every wishes. Yeah. And we think that's a fairly harmless thing yeah until the he he pulls out all the stops until he for, pulls out all the stops for his, for, lead, for his lead guy for his lead guy yeah um, which takes a whole uh, more yeah it's very dark turn. turn yeah and in a sense it's that that ties together all the different strands of the plot really 
it's that that leads yeah. to the final uh, denouement. Oh, very I nice. Think. Um, and, and what that is, is that uh, the festival director is so keen yeah. to, please. to please his artists that he will indulge them in anything they want, yeah. um, including their own particular sexual peccadilloes. Yeah, in a, I don't know, in a very, yeah, in the most, probably one of the most disgusting ways possible. Because, again, prostitution is legal in Austria. You can get a John, uh, 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 like a ve- really nice, um, um, like what, what, a call girl or something like that for, like they have money, you know? That's, that's the only logical point that, you know, didn't really sit well with me. Except if, his, if, if the preferences of that guy are even worse, which in case would, would mean that he actually prefers slave-traded women. Well, I think the... Which is a whole, would be a whole nother level of, what was, of what, evil. What, what's happening is that the, um, there is a, a, a brothel basically being run. Um, in Bavaria. In, in Bavaria, in a different, different place, not in Salzburg, but in Bavaria, which is... Uh, in Petting of all places. <laughs> which is uh, where the women are being trafficked to and from. Yeah. And um, it's like a whore house bro, um, um, hot, a hostel, like a hub. It looked like a hub. Yes. Yeah. So these, these, these poor women are trafficked there. And then the clients who are the, we see one of the opera singers from the festival yeah. is entertained there yeah. in a pretty unpleasant way. Yeah. Well, and yeah, it and, was uh, it was pretty pretty grueling, and as I say, this this ties together with all the various themes of the plot because who should be at the yeah. centre of this? Who should be running the brothel? But uh, one of the priests, yes, who's who's making money yeah. by doing this. Perfect cover. Um, Under that cloak, you can't see those bags of money. <laughs> and it's at this place that the final kind of showdown takes place. Well, well, actually, one, sorry, one, one of the final sure. showdowns, yeah. yes, um, between uh, Brenner and the his nemesis, this yeah, this priest, right, and yeah, it's, it's, the whole thing closes up with with a, a final battle between the henchmen who are now, well, they're I don't know. This movie has like three ends ending points where the one is where the where the henchmen basically give up after their fifth attempt to kill Brenner and Berti yeah and at that the last attempt he one got uh, like a uh, one of the guys gets shot in the arm and the other guy gets knocked out and they're like oh fuck this we're done here and they leave and then we have the end with the priest and then we have the end with 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 uh, Brenner um, um, talking to uh, his employer and his, the father of the employer, right? Those That's are the, right. Or and and yeah, yeah. Those are the three. Three. The most dramatic, I guess, would be the one with the priest. That's right. The the priest tries to kill Brenner, Berti, yeah. and one of the women that they've rescued from the brothel in. Yeah, Peking. exactly. And he tries to do that by locking them in a shower, yeah. turning the water up until as hot as it can go, which is 70 or 75 degrees Celsius. Above boiling. No, boiling is 100. No, it was 120 he turned it up to. Oh, she's... Yeah. She, oh, okay. All um, right. And um, Yeah, that's hot. That is hot. Um, and uh, he tries to kill them in that way. Yeah. Fortunately, they have an umbrella with them. Right, <laughs> which manages to preserve them until the priest is himself killed by yeah uh, the Schwartz prefect <laughs> coming back and, and, and fits fits the Schwartz yeah. prefect coming to take revenge on the priest yeah but in the process getting shot by the priest that's right so yeah that's a pretty dramatic gruesome that was a pretty crazy scene yeah way for the priest to end yeah so that ties up that 
bit of the plot and as yeah. you say then the, the next bit is where Brenna and uh, Bertie turn up to a very with, with, with boils all over from the from like two second degree burns and stuff like that they turn up at that really swanky event they turn up at a very swanky event where the director of the fest spiel is entertaining client or guests I suppose including the head of the church and the singer and the singer and they're all dressed up in tuxedos and also oh, black tie. Yeah. And it's a very glamorous event. And, and Bertie and Brenner turn up in their, what looked like kind of police shell suits. Yeah, to, totally. Completely like, battered. And uh, try and hold these people to account. Yeah. And it doesn't work. And it doesn't work. Because uh, the, the father intimidates, in a previous scene, intimidates his daughter into not saying anything and since there's no official record of ever employing Brenner or anything there's no he, his his testimony is null and void yeah so the daughter withdraws her instructions and says actually I now accept that my husband committed suicide mm -hmm. and wasn't murdered and she that found a note that she or her dad probably wrote yeah just to preserve her position and in, probably in fear of a very murderous father. Well, he, he never killed anybody. Not directly. Yeah. <laughs> he was only directing the, the murders. He, he was directing the murders. Yeah. <laughs> and that really brings it to a conclusion that I guess is anticipated by the title of the film, which is all about silence. Yes. And keeping silence. And if that's, yeah. that seems to be the... A theme that oh runs through the whole runs thing. through the whole film, isn't yeah. it? It's about the priest suffocating, the priest suffocating about people not saying, people burying yeah. secrets, people keeping silent. Yeah, yeah. Even Brenner himself not talking a lot in the whole thing. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, once you start to once you start to uh, look out for it, there's there's throughout the film there's lots of brilliant images of silence and oh yeah um uh, even the 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 title of the film is taken from a sign that's above the the, the shower. shower yeah um which is where the gruesome uh, denouement where they try to yeah uh where the uh where the priest tried to kill brenner yeah in right. the shower that 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 takes place in this yeah. uh, shower, right. which was used by the the boys, it yeah. seems, and where the priest could peep through yeah, and look at them showering. Yeah, I, I hate public showers now. <laughs> and then uh, uh, it's also used to um, for the homeless guys. They're allowed to shower in there. Right. So you can right. you constantly see this shower being used. And above the above the door to the shower is. Uh, the word silentium yeah um and Bren, brenner asks what that means yeah and uh which which he's he's very sober means uh shut up yeah in latin <laughs> yeah you said that beautifully yeah <laughs> thank you yeah it has to be to be worth something to be austrian and the austrian language is definitely one of the my main staples, I guess. Um, yeah, so I think we tried to untangle this mess. It didn't work totally, I guess. But watch the movie, I guess, to really see what the plot is all about. Um, yeah, um, so we're going to move on to the next part. And that's cinematography. What did you think? Did you... Did you is there anything that that stood out to you in, in... well what st what struck me about this film was the sort of special effects if you like the oh particularly yeah. i'm not sure if that's the right word but his brenner when he's concussed a couple of times yeah he has these kind of visions yeah and one of them which we discussed before was yes. where he's um in becomes the this kind of, no where he becomes this christ figure oh yes where the he has the one. crown of thorns and that's yeah. that's removed from him and he kind of sees himself in that and the second one is the the fußball scene where yeah. he is actually a player on the 
on the table football table yeah. and kind of powerless while he's spun around and hits this ball and you see other figures yeah. in the movie yes um, also Be, yeah, but being manipulated yeah, in this and way and Berthe being, being his goalie yeah or, or his in the in the defensive line of, of his team which is was was a really nice touch I thought that it was like antagonistical in that sense too yeah and that uh, they were all playing a big game and they're all kind of I suppose crucified there. Yeah. In this kind oh of, right. Yeah. There's in this, in this. additional symbolism. Like the, the, you, you, the movie, you, the movie is is so thick with symbolism. Once yeah. you get going, you you could just talk about that for hours. Oh um, yeah, totally. Yeah. This the, is yeah. this is this is definitely would be like a good study piece or a, or a, would would make an excellent analytical paper for for like a bachelor's degree or something like that. I think. You don't need to do a bachelor's degree. Just listen to us talk for. Yeah, two hours and it's it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and then you get the gist. You, you get the gist. Be fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so a few things I put with obviously the kind of references to the crucifix throughout. The right. other thing I sort of noticed was the reference to the confessional. So a number of okay. times people are speaking through what looks like a confessional box where you've got a screen between two people. Oh, so I was right. thinking like at the the pharmacy. Yeah. So when a uh, at one point goes to collect some headache pills yeah the strong ones the strong ones yeah and he goes oh for, and, for the international listener Austria it's very hard to get drugs in general and the, the, the hub basically for everything even aspirin is the, the those pharmacies so if you want to buy uh, drugs of any sort yeah. um, outside office hours as it were yeah. after the hours of five o'clock you go to the pharmacy and they open a little cubby hole in the yeah. front door and you give them the money and they give you the the drugs and yeah. in this film and in this context it looks like he was almost going to a confessional right and speaking yeah, no, through and, and the, she uh, had like a priest confessional thing going with the second time he showed up with are you sure are you not lying and stuff like that that's like, right and also the the the, pharm- the, the apothecary, the pharmacy, was called uh, Schutzengel, which means guardian angel. So yeah. I think that was quite... Difficult. Which is also a very typical pharmacy name. To give it... It's mostly classical music guys or like in some, some kind of Catholicism or, or angel reference, basically. Or sometimes from... Where, where they are basically it's it's they, they are all all pretty old at this point yeah new pharmacies are, are, are a rare thing still yeah so <clears throat> we th- that was that was the, yeah the symbolism was very very rich in this episode but also the way some of the shots were framed was amazing to me like in the in the shoplifting scene at the beginning you had a mirror in mirror shot of Brenner while he was tailing the, the the woman and when she moved out of the out of the, 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 the place you thought that he was standing basically uh, I don't know two levels removed or something like that and then she showed up in the front of the frame which I thought was brilliantly done yeah I love that I, I really really enjoyed that and in, in general it's very well shot and you see that they used film and not digital like you had sometimes like the, 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 a bit of a damaged frame or something like that yeah I thought that was very nice and at the beginning of the film during the title sequence you see a old film being played of um, like childhood oh. old, old kind of family film yeah eight so millimeter eight millimeter yeah of perfectly innocent childhood games and things yeah. like that um which again in this context take over a really take on a really sad and well the voice over of the one of the priests i think it was one of the priests or one of the guys who went to the seminary um well he talked about uh what what um he he said about Back in the days, the in the showers, the the priests, uh, Joseph, or no, his flat robe went uh, and turned into a circus tent. Was it a circus tent or a sailing ship? Uh, a sailing, sailing ship, ship. Yeah, sailing, sailing ship. ship. Yeah, the mast of a sailing ship. The mast of a sailing ship. Yeah. And so, yeah. 
these oh, these completely um, yeah. innocent yep. childhood videos are given this. I was like, all right, uh, yeah, corrupting. Yeah, <laughs> that was corrupting that was context, hard. and that's very that was quite painful to watch in a way. Oh yeah, 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 totally. And also the the the, the silent priest, the scene where he's walking down that candle alley. That was weird, but disturbing in a good way, I thought. There, there was a, a character, the silent priest, yeah. who was a priest who had tongue cancer. Right. And so he couldn't take, he couldn't talk. Couldn't, couldn't talk. Yeah. And in the end, passes on a key message to right. uh, Brenner yeah. by, by delivering it by remote control airplane, airplane while they're out on a, on, on a field. Um, but again, it's an, an example of a, a man that's been silenced, and uh, he, oh, yeah. he was the totally. he yeah. was the predecessor of the man who's now in charge of yeah. the, of the uh, seminary, who turns out to be the ultimate villain, I think, uh, or one of them. Yeah, I think it's two two guys. There's probably two. Yeah, there's, two. there's our classic Bond villain who keeps his yeah. Keeps, well, the keeps only thing that's the mess, missing is a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then there's the priest anyway yeah and then we have we have scenes like the action scenes who 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 look like a, a porn well you, movie. you spotted this and i think yeah. that was really really smart actually yeah. that seems to be a parody of a born movie car chase yeah right um, uh, in, in, the, in the park. park in the car park yeah where they just drive up the the the, the circular um levels and i'm like yeah that that totally could have been in in any of the Bond at, at Bond movies, <laughs> and they out, outsmart them too in a way that would totally fit into a into a, into a Bond Bond movie. Except for Bond would have thought of it and they did it by accident. That's right. <laughs> Which is crash their car on the way down into the into the uh, into the last level in the barrier so it looks like it's parked and then the, the, the bad guys just drive uh, by them and the there's lots of references to other movies oh, clearly yeah. um, for example the North by Northwest reference that famous scene where yeah, Carol totally. Grant is being chased or uh, flown over by a biplane yes um, exact that, same that, scene that exact same scene I think the out. scene where 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 the woman is dropping her bouquet of flowers down where her husband allegedly killed herself. Um, I think that's from Titanic, probably. Instead of a necklace, it's, it's, it's flowers, but I think that was a reference to Titanic or some of those, I don't know, dropping scenes, I guess. Then we had, uh, the, yeah, the, we had the Bourne thing. And we had one, 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 one more thing, I think. I thought of one more thing that this movie also is. Yeah, it's a body cop movie as well. Yeah. In, in, in some regards with the uh, antagonistical friendship between <coughs> like it's Riggs and, and, and what's the other guy's name from, from Lethal Weapon? Yes. Riggs and Marto. Yeah. Um, one, what else? Yeah, I think that was that was it when when it came to cinema. There, there are probably more references. That There's probably didn't... probably loads. Yeah. There's probably lots. That oh, probably the, the peeking through the window of the car. That was that was something famous. Then the lying on the grass scene. Yes. That was something famous. Yeah. So if, if you can write in and let us know. Yeah, that would. We could have grand. a competition. Yes, exactly. Spot. Spot, spot. the movie references. Yeah. And who has the most uh, doesn't win. Tit. So. Gets a mention. Yeah. Gets a mention. Uh, a shout out. Gets a, a, a shout out. Yeah. A shout out. Um, all right. Um, yeah, okay, so let's move on to sounds. Um, the soundtrack itself was very disturbing. I liked it. Well, I, I was going to yeah. say for the topic of sound, and it may be cheating a bit, yeah, but please. The, the use of um, 
music was really important in this film. Oh yeah. So um, one of the famous exports of Salzburg is Mozart and they used Mozart throughout the film. So for example, mm-hmm. when the, the villain is sitting in his study surrounded by this opulence. Um, yeah, and decadence. And decadence. Uh, um, as you said earlier, all he's missing is a cat. Yeah. He's, of course, he's listening to Mozart. He's, yeah, Mozart, and, and I think probably the Requiem and conducting his, it. Like conducting um, it at the same time, yeah. like any cliche Bond villain would do. Um, and, and the production that's being put on yeah. in the Salzburg Festival, where this opera singer that we've mentioned earlier is taking part and has got the lead role, is Mozart, and it's, I think it's in Führung aus dem Sarai which is yeah. a, um, an opera about um, rescuing a woman from a harem. Yeah. So again, I think that's obvious, <laughs> obviously a very deliberate choice. Yes. And, and I, 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 what I really enjoyed was um, at the end, uh, they're putting on, a, putting on the production. Yes. And uh, Brenner and... Um, rudely interrupted. Rudely interrupted with by... With Bertie. With Bertie by jumping yeah. off the cliff in a reference to uh, uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Uh, uh, one more, yes. Another nice. film for you. Yeah. Jumping off, in, and they, they, they crash into the uh, premiere or the, mm-hmm. the, the, the performance of this Mozart yeah. opera. But what I really liked... In front of a full house. In front of a full house of uh, opera goers who are wearing the classic uh, full yeah. black tie very elegant outfits and what I really liked was that this was clearly a modern and slightly avant-garde production of the opera oh yeah and so the yeah they had assault rifles they had assault rifles and they had kind of a a graffitied wall was part of the scenery but they crash into the scenery and completely interrupt the performance except the audience just sit there and I assume because they think this is part of the avant-garde production yes yes and uh, and it's a typical trope to play with that that the audience just just sit there and yeah, kind because of... because they can expect anything at They can this expect point. anything, even if it's two guys literally crashing into the stage and then having this kind of weird fight and chase sequence through the middle of the opera. With the lead guy and everybody else, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, I think that, that was a... We've slightly gone off sound yeah. there, but I think that was... Um, uh, really uh, that made me laugh actually oh, yeah, yeah. Funny. because they started the music up again at the end and and had this title sequence basically run again and stuff like that yeah the title sequence starts with very nine inch nailish music i thought like a, a experimental album made by nine inch nails basically yeah that was the main music through the whole thing and we have that sequence where where Brenner is putting on the music to smoke black Afghan with his ex-neo-Nazi buddy and he wanted to sync it up against to to the race. Oh, that's right. They try and synchronize the truck racing to the music. Yeah. I think that was... As you do. Yeah. (laughs) Look, they're white trash, but that doesn't mean they can't have some originality and fun. Um... It would be fun though if to see if something like that actually syncs up, like I don't know, Formula One with like some Rammstein music or something like that. That would be fun. <laughs> or some drag race with some drag race music. Um, yeah. So uh, what 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 else can we? Yeah, silence was definitely the most well. Yeah, important sound effect. Fact. Silence is the most I- yeah. important sound effect. Yeah, as in it this were. one um, and. What else is the is the I like the dipping in and out of of Berti when Berti yelled at uh, 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 Brenner while he was in those two dream sequences, and he shook him and he dipped out every time he went back into his dream and dipped in. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty pretty well done. I thought from a sound design standpoint. Yeah. You anything? To no, add I think to I, was, I was, I, I was, I was mainly concentrating on the music for the sound. Ah, okay, yeah, no, that's fine too. Yeah, yeah, like get get a different angle from from everybody. That's why I have a co-host. But it did, it, yeah. it did make me think about how like classical music has become the soundtrack to kind of supervillains. Yeah, yeah, or Star Wars, or Star Wars. <laughs> um, it's John Williams, and that's it. <laughs> no, that's not true. But 
All right, so uh, let's move on to best moment. What was what was what did you think was the best moment in this movie? Because it didn't have a finger losing scene like the last last movie. So no, but it did have a hand losing scene. Oh so, no, uh, no, a hand retrieval scene. Well, a hand we never saw. The, we never the, saw the hand being lost. Yes. Um, so. <laughs> We skipped the football football table that was stuffed with human. That's right. So um, at the end of the film, the towards the end, towards the end of yeah. the film, one of the scenes involves yeah. two of the boys playing table football. Yeah. And the and the uh, ball, ball, gets ball, ball gets stuck, and so they investigate why the ball's got stuck in the table, and it turns out that um, there's a body yeah. that's been dismembered yeah. hidden in the football table. Do you want to say it's Hands down, the best scene. Well, no, no, I, I, I don't. Um, but um, they then take the. They find the hand is the first thing they find, and yeah. then they take it into into the middle of a church service. Yeah. At the exact point when everyone is shaking hands. Yeah, which was ha, ha, also ha. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. As I say, the kind of symbolism. Yeah. Is, yeah, you can get dragged down to all these kind of rabbit holes of. <laughs> Symbolism, if you that, like. That, that scene was hand over foot the best. Okay, enough, enough hand puns. Wasn't my fav- favorite yeah. scene though. The scene yeah. I was going to say is my fa- well, my favorite moment. I think yeah. was that uh, very early on when he uh, Venner catches the woman shoplifting. Yeah, that whole scene that we've discussed before. She gets off because she's very well connected. She leaves the shop and he follows her out yeah. into a Salzburg street. And I really like that because in the background there was a bus parked and it said Gute Nachrichten von Salzburg. Oh, was the yeah. slogan. Yeah. And he stands there and then a chap who's publicising concerts, I guess, comes along dressed yeah. as Mozart oh, and yeah. hands him yeah, a, yeah. a flyer, I think. <laughs> um, and I just thought that was a really really kind of nice and slightly weird moment. And oh, it tells to be, you a lot about the city. Exactly. Yeah. In a very in a very efficient way, you sort of understood that kind of... Uh, that playing with history and... Oh, yeah, totally. And introduced... And full of details, that scene. Yeah. It only lost a, a little moment, but I really liked that. That's yeah, all. okay. So that's yeah. your best moment? I think so, yeah. All right, yeah, no, cool, cool, cool. What cool. was your favourite moment? Uh, my favourite moment would be would be probably uh, uh, the labor case joke scene would be my favorite but the best moment of the movie I thought was um, I hate to say it but but the, the pee drinking scene which one <laughs> right. Sorry, no, there, no. We must distinguish. Actually, yeah. there was a pee gargling scene, right? And there was a pee drinking scene. So right. That was stupid of me to ask. Which uh, yeah. one. You mean the pee drinking scene? Yeah. Rather than Come the pee on, gargling scene. Get your shit scene. together. Do you want uh, to rephrase that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, get your pee together. Right. Um, yeah. So um, the opera singer. Yes. He uh, gargles urine. Yeah. To improve his singing, it appears. Yeah, it, 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 he says it's like holy water for his vocal cords. The holy water for his vocal cords. So we first see him doing this backstage. Yeah. And uh, you, you pointed that out to me because I was, I was looking down at that moment. And you went, that's his urine, he's gargling. And I yeah. went, really? Yeah, and you thought it was beer. And, and you I'm laughed like, because he was gargling beer, which is funny. Yeah. But then it turns out he's going to pee. <laughs> yeah. And then Very it turns out this is actually quite an important plot point because yeah. the sexual peccadillo that we've yeah. been referring to throughout this right. is uh, drinking urine, yeah. which is what happens at the yeah. bottle. And yeah. we see that, and that happens to be your favourite scene. No, not my favourite scene. The best scene. There's a very, very important distinction. I thought it is the best scene in the, in the movie in that it solidifies the horribleness because up to that point, we only see the trafficking part. We don't see the actual abuse. Well, we already saw abuse, but not to a point where you're like, okay, these are not only evil guys, those are stone cold motherfuckers. Yeah? Yeah. Real they, assholes. Yeah. yeah. And just like the worst of the worst. And they, that scene dragged on because it was intercut with Brenner and Bertie breaking into the complex. Yeah. And it just, it just, I, I think five, seven minutes at least. They force fed the, the 
the guy is eating the sushi in a weird way or, or something and then fruit which makes him look even more like a douchebag um it is yeah. it is a really affecting it's scene very disturbing. because what you see is how it's, powerful he is in that situation yeah and how the victim is utterly powerless yeah and it's not that graphic in the sense that you well you don't you see, see you don't really see any violence or yeah. gore and yet it's yeah. incredibly disturbing no because, because it's the, the mental abuse the, exactly and it's that abuse of power that yeah. he is in such a powerful position and the the, yeah. the victim is so vulnerable and yeah utterly powerless yeah and then the whole catholicism thing plays into that whole thing because the priest is downstairs and he promised her a, a nice present for and and that it's god's will basically and that's that's even a more horrifying thing in my in my in my imagination because uh uh the sex trafficker in my mind is somebody where you know he's evil but he's under the guise of, of being a priest and, and working in the Lord's name. Well, I think that's exactly right. And the, 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 perhaps the, the most... Which makes it even more... Darkest thing yeah. about the film is yeah. his motivation. He claims oh, yeah. to be doing it for the... Yeah. For, for good, yeah. almost. Yes. Oh, yeah, that was also because an he, amazing scene where he was, like, reasoning his... Yeah, he justifies <laughs> he justifies the priest wow. who's the mastermind behind wow. his criminality. Yeah, no, just that's... justifies his his criminality by saying he uses the money yeah. for good and yeah. to keep the priesthood alive. Priesthood alive. <laughs> yeah. Best scene I thought, but yeah. Fucked up. I think you're probably right actually. It's probably the most important and best scene yeah again it's 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 a personal thing as well but i try to with best scene i normally try to remove myself and just try try to be as objective as i can even though i know i have very when it comes to movies i have some very very uh, big soft spots I for example for 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 nicholas cage movies um the thing um, I, I love the movie Drive Angry, even though it's a horrible mess of a movie, but it has, in my opinion, one of the best scenes ever filmed because it's a, it's a I think, 270 degree shot uh, in slow motion. He's in a bedroom of a brothel or something. It's an R-rated movie too. He's naked. He, no, no, he's, I think, a bit dressed and it's a prostitute fucking him. Um, uh, cowgirl style while he's smoking a cigar drinking Jack Daniels from the bottle and in the moment henchmen break into the room this is all happening in slow motion and he kills all of them while still fucking her smoking and drinking yeah so I have a lot of soft spots because I know it's utter trash but I, I try to be as objective as I can I just that's just the caveat I wanted to have to, for the for the for the for the viewers. I, I think we should yeah. also add another caveat. We described this film, and, and I hope it doesn't sound too unremittingly bleak, because it is. There are some very funny amusing moments, moments and yeah. uh, and funny moments in yeah. it. For example, when they all have pizza at the yeah. seminary, and it's it's handed around in the canteen. The priest is given pizza, pizza diavolo, which yeah. you, <laughs> which you ordered. You that, referred to the the joke, which yeah. is apparently a very well known joke in Austria about the Leberkäse. Leberkäse and yeah. um, I don't know. There, there, there's no such thing as Leberkäse in, in Britain, so I don't know what 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 to describe. Like a m I very fine meatloaf y. Yeah, kind of it's, it's kind of like meatloaf or spam, something like that. It's but very fine. Like it's 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 ground up so much. It's a bit like pate, isn't it? In in this kind of consistency. Like Yeah, but harder. Hard, hard pate. Yeah. <laughs> And it's warm. Normally, pate is cold. Yes. Yeah. And this hard, is... warm pate. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> and it's actually quite tasty. That, 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 it's very good. It's it's a perfect hangover food. Perfect hangover food. Yeah, like a, a semel, a kaiser roll, 
with with, a, with one two slices of the that, that the, the the cheese one because there's a cheese version of it where they have pockets of cheese in the in the one of and my uh, favorite discoveries in Austria was the Kaiser Kaina. Yeah. Which is not only... I described a, it to several Americans well, I, and it blew their minds. Yeah, not, not only is it a sausage, but it's yeah. got bits of cheese in it, which is probably one of the unhealthiest things you can have, but it's absolutely <laughs> delicious. Yeah, it's it's the best thing for me when, when I'm like six or eight beers in. I eat one of those and I can like be sure that I either puke or wake up the next morning without uh, like an emergency hangover. Yeah. Yeah. What a what a great the best thing to come out of Austria since Mozart. Probably. Probably. Yeah, probably. There, there are other things, uh, but <laughs> uh, right wing nationalism. <laughs> hey, it, it 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 conquered the world for 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 a bit, <laughs> and we have a resurgence well. right now. So. Ha, ha. That was our trump card that we played. Boom. Um, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice if Trump turned out to be an Austrian double agent? Y yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It would be fun. It would be. It would be very. Trump. It would be very fun. Um, all right. So, <laughs> I think we we covered our, our best moments. I guess. Yeah. And um, we. Now, go to um, it's your secret, your secret yeah, theme, I, I, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm just thinking about two different things that I could do, and I'm, I'm, I'm are you torn? Are I'm, you torn I'm very two torn. Brilliant options? Yes, I'm very torn. Yeah, let's let's do this, and the, that would be what kind of movie is this? And the idea, I guess, would be, um, how would you classify this movie? Uh, uh, Austrian. <laughs> That's too easy. Come on. No, no, come no, on. That was a, that was a, that was, that that was, was too was cheap. Glib and cheap. Sorry. Yeah. It's a, because it is, it's a thriller. Very much an Austrian movie. Yeah. So it's a thriller. Right. There's a, not a whodunit, as we said earlier, but yeah. a, what's going on yeah. element and he has to investigate it's a kind of a criminal thriller it's a political thriller right a religious it's a, a critical piece uh, i guess yeah yeah um it's a buddy cop movie as we said it's yeah. a it's a cop movie it's a buddy cop movie yeah um but like the, the more like a buddy cop movie where they uh, mixed it with um um What's the Walter Matthau movie where there are two old, uh, dreary sects that hate each other? The there are like three movies. The Odd Couple? Yeah, like the Odd Couple. Yeah, I suppose yeah? so. Yeah. yeah, because Bertie is a, to a degree, annoyingly positive human being. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Like, it, it makes him the most human in a normal sense. But I, I wonder if you could also describe it as a comedy in many ways. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Because like, there are some funny scenes in yes, it. Yes, yes. It's it's a it's a very dark comedy. It's a dark comedy. Yeah, yeah. That's I. Yeah. That's actually that's how I would describe it. Yeah, as a, as a dark comedy. An absurdist dark comedy because yeah. having those many strings of plot interweave and everything and just the um. To throw for a literary term out there, like a Kafkaesque kind of situation where you just can't do anything. Like you're again playing with the whole powerlessness and how how absurdist the whole thing is in its in its core. But it is like it is because things are like they are, and you can't change anything basically. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so I think a, a, a dark comedy is yes. I think as good a description as any. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that would be yeah. So what kind of movie is this? Dark comedy. Let's look up what what, what does IMDb say? What does IMDb, what does IMDb yeah, say? Yeah, just just as a just as a um, reference point because that would really seriously interest me. Dark comedy. Really? No, I made that oh. up. Um, <laughs> it. I think it probably. Let me see. 
waiting for the internet. We're waiting, waiting for the yeah. internet to to fire up. Yeah. Let's um, see. Do they categorize it? I, I think it's on, ah, on. So, um, yeah. a user review described it as a splendid black comedy, which is really <laughs> what we've. What we, it is a agree black with comedy. Well, I think so, yeah. No, because a black comedy was would be like Madea's, Madea's, uh any of the Madea movies. That's a black comedy. There's a very important distinction between black comedy and dark comedy. Ah, interesting. Yeah. You would draw a distinction between dark comedy and black comedy. Yeah. What, so, ah, interesting. But they can be both. You can have a black comedy that's dark. Okay. Um, the IMDB categorize yeah. it under crime and thriller, so I think oh, that's that's too easy. No, it's kind Just of too because, easy because he's a private eye and everything. That's too easy, I think. There's a lot of crime and thrillness, thrillness in it. Yeah, it thrilled me to the bone, but um, I wouldn't. No, no, no. I wouldn't describe it as a as a thriller. No, definitely not. That's that's too easy. That's too yeah. easy. Yeah. Lazy IMDb. Yes, lazy. I, again, Austrian movies are very lazily edited into IMDb in general. It's very hard sometimes to find pro the proper people and they have horrible vibes. Get your shit to get IMDb. Yeah, listen to this podcast, IMDb, and yes. appreciate Austrian films. Yes. And improve your categorization of them. Yes, exactly. Do it exactly as we say it now. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I think that there's a quota I have to fulfill to do at least one racist Austrian German Nazi voice. This has to be exactly like this, not the other way. There's only one way. <clears throat> yeah. Um, also, he's a. Uh, I think my my voice is a slightly gay, <laughs> which is very much to my character. Um, um, so. Let's round up the whole thing and go to final conclusion. Final conclusion. Well, would you like because we watched the the other part, the other movie? Um, I thought we we kind of pegged them against each other. I enjoyed Silencio more than uh, the Bone Man, for example. I would I would go so far as to say that Silentium offers more is a richer tapestry on which they paint. They are both excellent movies, but yeah. I, if I was going to watch one again, yeah, and I might do this, yeah. I think I'd watch Silentium again, right? Simply because it would be fun to see the whole plot, see the whole plot you know from the beginning, who, and to pick up more of the yeah. It's the like a, uh, I would I would describe it like a Pulp Fiction kind of Absolutely. rewatchability yes because yes. you finally have all the pieces and you see the puzzle but you're not completely done putting it together that's why i rewatched pulp fiction like five times <laughs> or seven times i don't know if, at this point i don't even know anymore it's a very watchable movie yeah so silentium um and what would be the setting what would you ooh if there's ever a, a showing in like maybe because it's what made in 2000 Five, 2004? 2004, I believe. 2004. If it's made in 2004, I would, I would imagine that 2024, maybe there's a special show in 20 years of Silentium or something like that, in a church. That would be like the perfect way to watch it, right? Yes, or you could watch it in an outdoor cinema. Oh, nice. Because the, the, the opera yeah. that we see in the film is right. being performed outdoors right which is yeah, where they a, can jump a, from a, the cliff in a, into the stage uh, atrium atrium amphitheater amphitheater yeah, yeah right because anyway. it has the, that, that what is it 60 degree um space for the for the audience yeah whatever uh, <laughs> but yeah would you would you recommend this movie to to your buddies or absolutely who, who? I'd, I'd recommend it to um Anybody older than 16, I guess. Anybody older than 16. Because it is really... And, and I don't want to give the impression... Subtle about the gruesomeness. It is everything. very subtle about the gruesomeness. I yeah. wouldn't want to give the impression that it's a, a hard watch. It's actually yeah. a really enjoyable and thought-provoking watch. Yes. And also really smart and yeah. nuanced. Yeah. But watch. get your hands on better subtitles than we did. Yes, we because should. Because we, we had subtitles for... I had the DVD 
went to Austrian DVD doesn't have English subtitles, so I downloaded subtitles and those were horrible. So find better subtitles well, than me. We, we, we watched it with subtitles for about 20 minutes and then the subtitles cut out. Yeah, and then so they, they returned, went silent. And then they returned once in, in, in French for yes. one sentence and then it was gone again. <laughs> yes. that, I found that really peculiar because the French didn't line up with, with, with the thing that they were saying at that point. So there were like random shit thrown in there. <laughs> yeah, so if you, if you can't speak German. Austrian German. Austrian German like, particularly. If you, like if you, you had to ask a few times. I did, I did. You would have missed a few key plot points, I guess. If, you, if I wasn't there for you. Like, find an Austrian buddy who can speak English. Good enough. Good enough. And, yeah. But 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 watch the film. It's really uh, entertaining. Yeah. You want to find out what happens next. Totally. Yeah. Um, thought-provoking. Great film. For you, because you now saw the whole series, I think. I've seen friends. the three of them now, yeah. Yeah, so the fourth one is missing. Yes. Yeah. Um... Where would you... You would have put it first? I think this three? is my favourite, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. what would what would be your... Um, the, and then the, the other two, I think, yeah. were both equally good. Komsu okay. Sotort and uh, Knochen... Knochenmann. Knochenmann. Der Knochenmann, yeah. Der Knochenmann. I'd, I'd put them... Um, On equal... Equal good. If I yeah. had to watch one again, if I had to yeah. pick one to watch again, I think I'd watch this one again. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um... Time for your plugs, man. Where where can people find you? It, yeah, so uh, I'm performing in Vienna. Yeah, right. And Just the best like way to find out the best yeah. way to find out about uh, upcoming shows is on my Facebook page. So look for me, Luke Hacker. Yeah. And I put all the shows I'm going to perform in. Right. Um, on that Facebook page, and in right fact, on. I'm doing my first German Ooh. performance sometime in March I can't quite remember when <laughs> um, oh, it's very good so look out for that yeah I, uh, I would I would like to see that come along come yeah. along provide the subtitles <laughs> <laughs> I will um, uh, but I'm gonna stop after after 30% into the show yeah, just, just give me subtitles for 30% then go yeah. silent and then do some random French words yes exactly oh, <laughs> that was very racist um and i think we can close up with that uh thank you luke for being here absolute pleasure i hope we're gonna have you back at some point i'd love to come back uh great um and uh till the next time guys bye bye bye